gonna get going soon okay so again hello 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 thank you for joining another Facebook live session with me Kathy Lloyd realtor how are you guys doing today on this fabulous Thursday how are you coping with the pandemic how are you coping with being home if you're essential how are you coping with going out to work leave a thumbs up if you're doing okay let me know share with us in the comments how you are coping during this time and i want to send a special thank you for all of you uh for sharing and liking our essential workers appreciation post i'm sure that they really appreciated that post showing our love for their service during this time so today we're going to talk a little bit about romantic relationships and real estate um, with a more focus on how you can talk about real estate and approach real estate as a couple during this time of curfews and lockdowns. So let's start out with seeing who's enjoying their time off with their spouse, who's loving this time off, spending time talking, chilling, Netflixing, however you're passing the time. Send us an emoji, love, or heart comment so that we know that you're enjoying your time off being with your spouse. And we're going to dive into the keys that we're going to talk about today. Now, this chat was originally based on the blog that was posted this week. And if you didn't get a chance to read it, it was, in t it was talking about how engaged couples should go about getting engaged in real estate. So what I will do is I will post the I will post the link for the blog so that you can catch up. And it's kathytherealtor.com forward slash blog and it'll be in the comments if you want to go and catch up and read the blog. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, Stefanel, you're an essential worker, so I fully understand how you wish to be home, spending time with your spouse. <laughs> Let's go into the first key for this week's chat. And the first key is to talk about real estate. Now, every relationship isn't going to take the same route, isn't going to have the same steps. And so therefore, real estate may come up as a topic while you're dating. It may come up as a topic during the engagement phase. It may come up as a topic after you get married. But real estate is considered one of those tough topics. And that's because it involves a lot of communication. It involves talking about finances, and it's also another way to really get to know your partner. So it's good to approach this step talking about real estate with your partner by making it a little fun, a little lighthearted, even though it's a serious topic, make it a little fun. Now, two of the ways that I suggest you do this is to first have a conversation. This conversation may be an intentional sit down conversation. It might be a out of the blue uh, question to your mate. So I like to start with what if, or I would like to. I like the what if more because it leaves the conversation open for your partner to actually give their thoughts, express their feelings, express their desires. And so it'll go a little bit like, oh, what if we were to buy five acres on a family island and move there? We can start farming. What if we do that? And then your partner would respond to you and give you what they feel is best or tell you if they would be able to compromise on something like that. And for me, this happens often. Um, no later than this morning, my husband came to me with a what if. And my reaction was like, so he's still trying to convince me or sell me the dream that I'm not buying as yet, but at least it started a conversation. Now, the second activity that I recommend that would 
help you to start your conversation is doing a vision board together. I am a big believer in vision boards. I have done several of them and it really brings clarity. It gives you a roadmap. It allows you to see your dreams and your visions in a physical way and it gives you motivation day by day, especially if you have it placed somewhere where you can see it every day. And so this vision board can be physical or if you're more technologically inclined, you can do this as a Google document or a Word document. You just get images, any images that symbolize your dreams, your wants. And when it comes to real estate, that may be the word ownership, that may be the word landlord, that may be the word investment, that may be a picture of a home on a beach, that may be a picture of um, an apartment building, that may be a picture of a hotel or resort. So a vision board is a really good tool for clarity, it's a really good roadmap, and it's a really good way to share your dreams with your partner and you will get to see a cohesive picture of both dreams and goals together. So that is talking about it. Make it fun, make it lighthearted because real estate is a heavy topic like I mentioned before. It involves communication, it involves financing, and so it's a good thing for you guys to come together and talk about it. So the second step is prepare for it. Now, it is good to prepare for everything we do. Some things you can't prepare for because it's on the spot, spur of the moment, but it's good to have a plan. Your plan won't always go as you want it to, but you can always make changes. Now, the first thing with preparing when it comes to real estate is knowing where you're at. And knowing where you're at definitely makes the journey easier. It makes it clearer. You know where you're at, you know where you wanna be and getting there is easier. So that would involve a lot of financing again. List your assets, your liabilities, your debts, set a budget. And as a couple, uh, these activities we may be used to doing as individuals, we may still maintain um, our individuality and in doing these uh, activities separately, but we have to come together now because we're living life together and create budgets that work for you as a couple, work for you as a family. Like I said, this may not be in a dating stage. You may already be married and you still have some real estate goals that you want to accomplish. So you will have to come together, bring all of your assets, your liabilities, your debts, everything together, and then see how best you can move forward. After you've done all of that, assessing your financial position, you can now move on to becoming pre-qualified by a mortgage officer. This allows you to know what steps you can take um, to, put, to achieve your real estate goals because not knowing what you can spend can lead to a total devastating situation. And sometimes it's very disappointing when people start looking for properties that are outside of their budget and then they find out that they can't afford it and then they get really discouraged in the real estate process. So being pre-qualified by a mortgage officer is the next way to prepare for it, for real estate with your partner. And that involves bringing your income together, letting the mortgage officer know what you, what you both make, what you both can afford, what bills you have and all of that so that they can give you a realistic figure that you can work with. So that's talking about it, making it fun, making it lighthearted, preparing for it, uh, assessing your financial position, being pre-approved by your mortgage officer. Now it's time for action. It's time to get to it. So first, we do steps that make your goal more achievable. You may decide to create a joint bank account if you don't already have one. And if you have one already, you may decide to make a joint bank account specifically for your real estate dreams. Because now you know what you can afford, you would know uh, what expenses you will incur in terms of achieving your real estate goals. And so this bank, joint bank account will be really goal specific. And then after creating that bank account, you'll contact a real estate agent like myself 
and you'll have a consultation, uh, decide what kind of options you're looking for, what kind of property do you want? Is it multifamily? Is it single family? Is it a vacant lot? Is it commercial? And we will do, uh, well, I will do my best to guide you and send you the options that match your wants, your likes, and the budget that you have. And then the final step to really get you into the process is asking your agent to set up viewing appointments. So this gets you familiar with properties that are inside your budget. It gets you familiar with the work that you would have to put into a property that you would buy. It allows you to see whether you want to continue with the process or wait until you can maximize your budget and get a property that's in a better condition or if you want to proceed. So that is talking about it, preparing preparing for it and getting to it, actually actively searching. And like I said, real estate is a very important topic for those who are dating, for those who have just gotten engaged. If you're married and you haven't uh, achieved a real estate dream of yours, it's a very important and sometimes complicated and heavy topic. Now, we all know that most couples, some of us have one stubborn person inside the relationship. Some of us have two strong-minded, stubborn. Um, we all have goals. We all have things that we are looking forward to. And then we know that sometimes we just have to sit, communicate, compromise. And with all topics when it comes to your relationship, it is good to sit down, have clarity, know what you're willing to compromise on and know how you're going to move forward. And real estate is no different. So those are your keys for today when it comes to relationships and real estate. You're gonna talk about it, you're gonna prepare for it, and then you're gonna get to it. So I will see you next time and thank you again for joining me. And I wish you a very good holiday, a very good weekend, and a very good evening.